Hey guys, it's Miss Fatty here, ready to read with you, Reproduction Requires Energy. Now in my classroom, whenever we read, we use an active reading strategy. Have you ever read an article or a book page and got to the bottom and thought, what did I just read? Well, that happens to me all the time. These active reading strategies help us focus on the article and the main ideas it is trying to tell us. Before I read, I like to start with something called a title prethink. We read the title and think about what this article could be telling us. As we read, we like to look for our unit vocabulary and also annotate by circling new ideas or new words and writing our, some notes to ourselves about what we're figuring out. We also usually underline pieces that seem to be helping us answer a question. Now in our unit, we are trying to figure out why the moon jellies are increasing in size so rapidly. We know that there must be more births than deaths in the population for this to incur. So anywhere we're finding evidence about why more births than deaths might be occurring, we're gonna underline that section. Let's get started. Reproduction requires energy. Now before I even read the text, I know that this article is something to do with reproduction. And reproduction, as it'll tell me here, is the process of creating offspring. Or, in a simpler way, is the process of giving birth, making new organisms in the population. I see that it has the second part to it that says it requires energy. So it seems like this article is going to be telling us about what is necessary for organisms to be able to reproduce. It seems like it has something to do with energy, and I'm wondering if it's gonna tell us what type of energy organisms need to reproduce. So let's get started. Reproduction is a lot of work. Some organisms travel thousands of miles to find a mate, the right place to lay eggs, or the right spot to give birth. They might work hard to attract males using songs, movements, and other displays. Other organisms might fight fierce battles to win their mates and the chance to reproduce. Often this is just the beginning of the job. Many organisms work hard to protect their eggs, find food for their young, and do everything else that may be required for successful reproduction. So it looks like an example of this, what it's talking about here, is that these male elks are fighting one another. So they are not necessarily producing the babies, but they are still using energy and needing to be part of this reproductive process. No matter what an organism goes through to reproduce, the process requires lots of energy. In fact, for many organisms, Reproduction requires more energy than anything else in their lives. Okay, this seems really key to me. I'm gonna add a note. So reproduction needs a lot of energy for both males and females. Some don't even survive reproduction. It requires so much energy that these organisms reproduce and then die. That seems crazy that they have their baby and then die right away. Whether reproduction is relatively easy or extremely difficult, every organism needs energy in order to reproduce. Without energy, there can be no reproduction. Okay, so I'm gonna add a note here. What kind of energy are they talking about? Organisms get the energy they need from energy storage models. Ah, huh. okay, so this is kind of answering that question that we had. Energy storage molecules, I'm going to abbreviate it ESM, molecules such as glucose, starch, and fat. These molecules store energy that can be released in the bodies of organisms when they need it. Plants and other producers can make their own energy storage molecules through photosynthesis, but other organisms can't do that. To get energy storage molecules, they need to what is food, really? Food is the body parts of organisms that contain molecules, such as energy storage molecules, that other organisms need. 
Consumer populations, hmm, this seems like a new word to us, is the term ecologists use to talk about a population that eats other organisms for food. Ecologists call a population that is eaten for food a resource population. Every consumer population gets its energy storage molecules from a resource population. Okay, so this is, seems like, I'm, I'm going to add a note here because this seems like a new idea to us. Um, oops, so I can't quite, okay. So this consumer versus resource population how they get the energy, right? It seems like the consumer is getting the energy from the resource. And I, I recognize this diagram from the digital model. There were the arrows between the green leaves and the wee bugs and, and the furbles, and we were wondering what those were. So it seems like that that shows the transmission of energy storage molecules. Interesting. To learn about some specific populations and how they get enormous numbers of energy storage molecules they need to release energy for reproduction, read one of more of the chapters that follow. So let's just go ahead and browse quickly what the chapters are. So there's one about the sockeye salmon. There's one about, it looks like the emperor penguins. There's one about the fireflies, uh, one about elephant seals, and that's it. So you can pick between those different ones. Um, in the next slide, I will post what point of the video you should scroll to to hear about the different organisms, or you can go ahead and watch it all. We just read chapter one together. Now what I encourage you to do is read or listen to another chapter to learn a little bit more. If you want to learn about the sockeye salmon, skip to around 7 minutes and 35 seconds in this video. For the emperor penguins, skip to around 12 minutes and 20 seconds. For the firefly, skip to around 17 minutes and 10 seconds. And for the elephant seals, skip to around 20 minutes and 20 seconds. Enjoy! So this is the chapter on the sockeye salmon and it's called dying to reproduce. So here's our sockeye salmon. Again, if I'm doing my title pre-think, I'm thinking that maybe this is one of the organisms that uses so much energy in reproduction that they die actually after giving birth. But let's find out. This is our sockeye salmon here. The sockeye salmon of the Snake River in Idaho literally work themselves to death in order to reproduce. For these salmon, reproduction requires so much energy that they die in the process. Wow. However, if they are lucky, they will leave thousands of offspring behind. So even though the mother or dies, there are so many fish that are born from this reproductive cycle that the population can continue on. These sockeye salmon begin their lives in the fast flowing Snake River in the mountains of Idaho. Now this is really close to where we are in Seattle, um, which is kind of cool. Maybe people have been there or, or maybe have heard of this before. While they are young, the salmon follow the Snake and Columbia rivers all the way to the Pacific Ocean, where they spend most of their lives. In the ocean, they eat shrimp, squid, eels, and other fish to get energy storage molecules. They eat as much of these resource populations as they can. They need to eat enough to fuel a journey back to the area of the Snake River where they hatched. This is where they will reproduce. So here we have, and I'm gonna add a no, it looks like the consumer population is that uh, salmon and the resource population is the shrimp. Um, that diagram that we saw before. Returning to the place where they were hatched is an energy intensive journey of hundreds of miles. Wow, that is a large distance. Using scent to find their way, the salmon follow the Columbia River, hey, that is in Washington, and then use the Snake River back to the place where they hatched. 
They swim up the river, struggling against the current. In some places, waterfalls block their way. The salmon jump as high as 3.5 meters, 12 feet. I'm really short, so that is double me in the air to get up and over these waterfalls using huge amounts of energy. Finally, they find the right place to reproduce. Oh, I like that. It's like happily ever after. Even after their long, hard journey, the work of reproduction is not over for the sockeye salmon. They still have to battle one another for the chance to reproduce. Females fight each other to get the best nesting spots, and males fight each other for access to females. All that fighting uses even more energy. The female salmon digest, dig nests in the gravel at the bottom of the stream to lay their eggs in. Each female makes four or five nests and lay as many as 12,000 eggs in each one. Laying so many eggs also requires a lot of energy. After the female lays her eggs, the male places his sperm over them and the female buries the nest with more gravel. Once they have mated, the exhausted salmon guard the eggs for as long as they can before dying in their stream. During the entire process of reproduction, salmon need to release energy from their energy storage molecules. They release energy from fat that they stored in their bodies during their time eating in the ocean. Wow, I'm gonna add a note here, as we heard a lot. So they are using energy to swim upstream, to dig, um, to, to have the eggs. Wow, lots of energy needed for these births to happen. here we have that's that's the little balls of salmon eggs at the bottom of the stream all of this work for these tiny things cool. so this chapter is on the emperor penguins which we have these cute little guys right here and it's called reproducing in the coldest place on earth so i'm guessing this is going to be about from looking at the title that if it's the coldest place on earth, it probably is not such an easy place uh, to give birth, to have these babies. So I'm sure it'll be telling us about how they're able to do that. For the emperor penguin population near, oh man, I'm getting to say this wrong, Ragnolid, Antarctica, reproduction requires an enormous amount of energy. They reproduce in one of the harshest environments on Earth, the thick shelf of ice that forms around Antarctica each winter. Just surviving in this environment takes a lot of energy, and reproducing there takes even more. Temperatures often drop below negative 34 Celsius, which is about negative 30 degrees in Fahrenheit. With strong winds and violent storms in these harsh conditions, Emperor penguins spend months working hard to raise just one chick at a time. So these are a little different than if you were with us for the salmon article. We found out that salmon give birth to a ton of eggs, but in these penguins, it's really a lot of energy uh, for this one, um, one chick that they're gonna give birth to. For this population of emperor penguins, the work of reproduction begins with a walk across miles of ice to reach their breeding grounds. Once the, the penguin pairs up and mate, and each female lays a single egg on the ice, the male quickly and carefully rolls the egg onto the top of his feet where he will keep it warm under a flap of skin. The male must keep the egg balanced on his feet until it hatches more than two months later. That is such a long time to be holding the egg there. Through the freezing cold Antarctic winter, male emperor penguins act like living heaters, using energy to warm the eggs with their body heat. Meanwhile, the female penguins must walk all the way back to the ocean to find food for themselves and for the chicks that will soon hatch. By this time in the winter, more ice has frozen and widened the ice shelf around Antarctica. Female penguins may have to walk across more than 50 miles of ice to reach the water. 
Walking so far in the freezing cold requires a lot of energy. In the ocean, the female penguins catch and eat squid, small fish, and tiny ocean creatures called krill. These resource populations provide the energy storage molecules they and their offspring need to survive. Okay, I'm gonna add a little note here. So the emperor penguins um, are eating the krill. So the krill is the resource population. That was one of our new words. And the penguins consumer population. Interesting. Oops. Once full, the female penguins walk back to the breeding grounds where their partners are warming their eggs. The chicks there have finally hatched and are ready to eat the food their mother brings. The male and female penguins now take turns. One holds the chick on its feet to keep it warm, while the other walks to the ocean to hunt. In the ocean, the penguins catch as much food as they possibly can. They need to catch enough for their own energy needs, as well as extra food to feed their hungry chicks. The penguin pair shares the work of raising the chick for several more weeks until the chick can survive on its own. During this time, the penguin's bodies release energy from energy storage molecules. All the fat they build up while they were feeding in the ocean. Reproduction is hard work for the emperor penguins near Ragnhild, requiring more energy than any other, any other part of their lives. So here they are. All this must be, they're traveling thousands of miles across the ice to find their food. So that is a really, really long journey. This article is about the fireflies, reproducing brilliantly. It's easy to see that fireflies use energy for reproduction. They actually light up to attract a mate. Oh, so this little light right here. The glow of fireflies comes from a chemical reaction that happens inside their bodies. Oh, so lots of us have done the chemical reactions unit and, and know what it's talking about here. It takes energy for fireflies to turn the glow on and off. There are many types of fireflies living in colonies all over the world. One well-known population is a population of blue ghost fireflies living in DuPont State Forest in North Carolina. Fireflies turn their glow on and off in patterns that other fireflies recognize. They find each other using light signals. Oh, this kind of reminds me of like Morse code, like flashing lights or sounds um, that they would be able to recognize. Females usually sit on leaves and flash, while males flash as they fly around searching for females. Male blue ghost fireflies are known for using long, slow flashes as they fly. Of course, flying also requires energy. Male and female fireflies flash signals to each other as the male gets closer and closer to the female. Eventually, they meet. After mating, each female firefly lays about a hundred eggs in the soil. It takes energy to produce so many eggs. So if you were with us for the salmon article, this was sim something similar, that the salmon produce a lot of eggs, while the penguins that we read about only produced one. The firefly eggs hatch into wingless larvae that live in the soil. Fireflies spend most of their lives as larvae, eating insects, snails, and slugs. These resource populations provide the firefly larvae with lots of energy storage molecules, which they store in their bodies in the form of fat. When they are ready, the larvae build mud chambers for themselves and hole up inside. In the chambers, the larvae transform into adults with wings, ready to fly away and mate. The energy storage molecules that the fireflies store up as larvae come in handy when it's time for them to reproduce. After eating for most of their lives, the fireflies' bodies can release energy from the energy storage molecules they built up in their bodies during that time. In fact, adult blue ghost fireflies do nothing but mate and lay eggs, so all of their energy goes into reproduction. 
So this is one of the blue ghost larvae. Um, and again, mostly all of their energy is going to giving birth. So we can really see that giving birth, reproduction requires a lot of energy. This article is about elephant seals. Elephant seals fighting to reproduce. So I wonder if this article is going to be telling us about how they fight or, or they have to do certain rituals to be able to mate. Just looking at the picture, I think that gives us a little clue. For male elephant seals, reproduction is an exhausting battle. These enormous animals fight over mating territories in long, noisy, bloody clashes. For male elephant seals, just winning the chance to reproduce takes enormous amounts of energy. Imagine if you're the one that lost. Oh, man. Elephant seals spend about 10 months of the year in the open ocean, hunting and eating so they can store up enough energy storage molecules to keep them going during reproduction. So 10 months to give birth or be able to have the option to reproduce and try to give birth. Elephant seals eat many different types of fish, including rays and small sharks, as well as octopuses and crabs. These resource populations provide the energy storage molecules elephant seals need to reproduce. So I'm going to add a note here that the elephant seals, they eat crabs, but also we see they're eating rays, small sharks, and octopuses. So they have a lot of resource populations. Look at that. Even though elephant seals spend most of their time in the water, they reproduce on beaches. One population of elephant seals does all of its reproduction work on a beach called Piedras Blancas on the central coast of California. The males arrive at Piedras Blancas beach first and begin staking out territories, areas of the beach that belong to them. The very biggest males, which may be about seven meters, which is 20 feet long and weigh more than 3,600 kilograms or 8,000 pounds, take the best spots on the beach. Holding beach territory is important because when females arrive, they will choose an area of the beach and eventually mate with the male who controls the territory. To keep his territory, a male has to fight off any other males who challenge him. The fights begin with threats. The males rear up and make roaring noises with their long trunk-like snouts. Where was I? If neither male backs down, they clash together, hitting each other on the neck and chest with sharp teeth. Males rarely die in these battles, but they often end up injured and bloody, and each fight requires a lot of energy. In order to mate with the females on his stretch of beach, a male has to defend his territory by winning fight after fight over the course of several months. All that effort takes energy, and the seal's body gets its energy from the energy storage molecules it stores up during its time eating in the ocean. These males may win the chance to reproduce with a dozen or more females, but there is a high energy cost for it. During the months a male spends mating and defending his beach, he may lose about one third of his body weight. Wow, so it's a lot of effort, a lot of energy for these seals to be able to give birth and reproduce.